Good morning, gang. Yes, my hair is wet again. It is absolutely pouring down outside. And, you know, just wanna, just wanna do, you know, get a little bit of recording done while I'm here. Anyway, uh, we're now up to chapter three of Eddie Wu's Wonderful World of Maths. This one is called Music to My Ears. I uh, already like it. I like the idea of that. I'm gonna <clears throat> just turn up the gain a little bit as I stand away from it and start yeah, getting it down pat. Let's skip right into it, eh? Morning, gang. The acoustic guitar sitting beside my desk is a marvelous piece of design. Every time I strum the strings, it's making the best sounding mathematics you could imagine. Humans have been making music ever since, well, ever since there have been humans. But it was Pythagoras. Yes, that Pythagoras. Mmm, everyone loves Pythagoras. The one best known for tormenting children around the world with right angle triangles, who is said to have discovered and articulated the mathematics that gives us the musical notes we know and love. What a man, what a lad, what a champion. Let's just, yes. Oy! As the story goes, Pythagoras was walking along when he passed a blacksmith. Inside the smithy, a pair of workers were hammering away on their anvils, and each anvil being a different size made a different sound when it was hit. It was at that moment that he realized there must be a mathematical relationship between the object's size and the sound that it made. Experimenting on some metal bars that the blacksmith had left near the street, because when you're freeing, when you're a th free-thinking ancient Greek philosopher, no one minds if you hit their belongings for no apparent reason. He noticed that it sounded especially good if he struck a bar together with one that was exactly half its length. To understand why, he needed to know a little bit about how sound works. Whenever air vibrates, our ears perceive it as sound. Anything that moves the air will make sound. Don't you move. Don't you move. There you go. Oh, yeah, that's my door. A handy dandy door. Ah, oh, wait, wait, wait. I tried, I tried. Whenever air vibrates, our ears perceive it as sound. Anything that moves will make sound. Your footsteps on the ground as you walk the hundreds of gears and pistons in your car's engine when you drive, or the wind howling outside during, outside during a storm. We can represent those sounds visually inside a graph that shows how much the air is vibrating in a particular spot as time passes. Here's what the graph of footsteps, car engines, and windy weather look like. So, let me just put it right in front of the camera. Ooh. Ooh. So, footsteps. It's like a and then a car engine. Yep. And then windy weather. Oh wow, I'm so close to the microphone, this must sound absolutely horrendous. <laughs> ah, <clears throat> my throat. Okay, so there's the sound vibrations represented in a graph. Wonderful. And with the sounding of Fletcher Kendall. While these graphs don't seem to look very much like each other, they all share something in common. None of these graphs represents a musical sound, so their graphs wave up and down with what appears to be chaotic unpredictability. Compare them to the following graphs which each represent a musical note. Da That's way too bright. I hit my microphone. So nice. Mmm, yeah, that's, that's a note. Mmm, what a good looking graph. 
<clears throat> so good. Anyway, that's what a graph looks like for the key. A yeah, very nice. The difference is immediately striking. Mathematicians call these kinds of graphs periodic since they repeat over and over at consistent intervals of time, periods. The actual shape you're looking at gets the fancy title of sinusoidal wave because sinus comes from the Latin term for curve. Huh. Very nice. Hey. You pretty sinus. Oh, damn. Hmm. They've got some good... Sinus. You! Hmm, that's the way. Your sinuses are a series of curved recesses. <gasps> He's not wrong. Wow. 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 Just wow. 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 Mathematicians, famously lazy and always looking for ways to abbreviate things, call it sine. For short, a sine graph that waves up and down more quickly has a high frequency, which we hear as higher pitch, such as eh! while one that waves slowly has a low frequency and a low f pitch. Eh! So like, you got, imagine my finger. I'm not going to edit this in, I'm, I'm too lazy for that. I'm like a mathematician. So if I go, ee, it's got like, whoa, 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 off the screen, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like massive. <clears throat> Whereas, ah, uh, will be like, it's like a, ah, uh, and then like, if you want like really deep, it's like, oh, like super deep. <clears throat> Bro, no, I can't get any deeper than that. <clears throat> Mu uh, musical instruments can make these very simple sound graphs because they are actually very simple objects. For instance, the instrument I'm most familiar with, the acoustic guitar. Same here, I've literally got one right there. I'm thinking I'm just going to bring it out at the end and uh, play a little bit of a chord because I do like to play a little bit of chords. Mm hmm. Yeah, very nice. The instrument I'm most familiar with, the acoustic guitar, is basically just a set of strings that move up and down to vibrate the air around them. The hollow body of the guitar just provides a space where the vibrations can echo and amplify, producing a louder sound. The actual essence of the guitar is just a string. When you pluck a guitar string or any string that is held tight enough for that matter, it oscillates up and down, vibrating the air around it, creating a lovely note. But and this is where we start to understand what Pythagoras discovered. The beauty of a musical instrument is that you can play it different notes. On a guitar, the way you do that is by holding down a string in one of the vertical bars positioned on the guitar's necks, which are called threats. Sorry, frets. Frets aren't threatening. Bah! Pressing down on a fret essentially makes the string act as, as though it, it was a shorter version of itself. The part you pluck has a smaller length than if you had the left of the string untouched, and a shorter string can vibrate up and down faster, while a longer string has to vibrate up and down more slowly. Let me demonstrate. Let me just grab a page. It's page 23. Yes. Ah, yes. Yes. Ah. Oh. oh, my guitar. Mmm. Delicious. So if I was to, let's go this way. This is the top string. So it's oscillating or vibrating very, very big because it's got lots of room, lots of playability to it. So like, yeah. But if I was to put my finger Let's say, I have no idea what the notes are, I've completely forgotten. It's like E, A, D, G, E, F, or something I've forgotten. It makes it oscillate at a higher frequency. I'm going to just go slap this door for a couple of seconds. Come here. Come here. 
big, big oscillations makes lower frequency. Less, you know, it's more like, wah. I think I got that. I think I, I explained it wrong before. Maybe. Nah. It is what it is. And it goes, -da 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 -da, because it's small. And if we go up to here, it's going real quick. And then we go down to here, it's going like, it's like vibrating really fast. So then you can play some guitar chords. Like. If I can remember them, because I've been practicing them all day. Ah! My fingers hurt from the metal strings. Anyway, I shall continue reading. Maybe I should just leave this new while I just go. as the old people did. 23, 23. Here we go. An easier way of thinking about this is to imagine some children playing with a really long skipping rope, the kind that allows you to fit four or five people inside, all at the same time. The rope will go more slowly than one which is only designed for a single person, and the guitar string are just the same. Fast. Slow, medium, medium rare, medium well done, jazz. G'day guys and good morning to all, we're gonna have some good morning jazz. What is jazz? Just an excuse for musicians to be lazy with the chords and keys. Jazz. Yeah. Anyway, this isn't the only thing you can do to control the speed of a string's movement. Thicker, heavier strings also move more slowly, and so they produce notes with lower pitch. Very nice. That's one of the differences between the six strings you find on your guitar. The strings get progressively thicker to enable them to make deeper and deeper sounds. This is also why if you walk into a musical store and compare a regular guitar to its bass counterpart, you'll find the bass guitar strings thicker. Extra. Thick. Thick. Let's come back to Pythagoras. Suppose this was a set of metal bars he stumbled across along there with their lengths. Let's get, in here. Okay. get even closer. So, where is it? There. One, two, three, four, five. There. That's what he's talking about. Imagine these were it. So one is really short, and then five is like, far out the light. Light, get out the way. Why does the sun have to come out today? And like five is almost like... It's almost five times bigger than one. I got a bar two being exactly half the length of bar four. Never mind. Vibrates faster. Yeah, one is like half the length three. Two is half the length of four. Three is half the length of five. I think that's what they're going for. Well, let's find out, hey? B, bar 2 being exactly half the length of bar 4 vibrates faster, twice as fast in fact, so when you compare their sound graphs they look like this. So the smaller, smaller the bar, the faster it vibrates, which means, focus, focus, there we go, don't focus on my face. It means, so if you see bar 2, this one here, it's, it's periods or it's frequency of uh, crossing the line is much faster than that of bar 4 which is nice and slow. And that's because of its length. Wow. 
so nice. Ah, oh, so nice. You can see that over and over again. The sounds start vibrating and stop vibrating together. And this is what we hear and feel as harmony. These notes sound great together. In particular, these two notes are what musicians call an octave. Incredible. Music is the art of taking these chords and combining them in ways that form an emotional journey. For instance, the consummate composer Beethoven is known for his astonishing skill in arranging sounds of consonants, like the harmony shown opposite, together with the sounds of dissonance, which causes the listener to yearn for a resolution. Dissonance chords will look very different when considering their sound graph. If we look here, that's dissonance. That's bad. That means they're not, not together. Consonants, I think, means together. Not quite sure. Don't have a dictionary with me. The internet, I do, but I won't research it because I'm, because I'm lazy. <laughs> anyway, that's dissonance, and musicians use this to, uh, you know, want the, want the people to like, you know, be like, mm, ow, we want, we want resolution. We want nice endings. We like our nice endings because nice endings are good. Anyway. You can see here with the musical notes and dissonant chords get very close, but never seem to start or stop together at neat intervals. The human ear bristles at such sounds, which is why our musical yearning is actually the unconscious desire for mathematical harmony. This Eddie Wu, he's on a different level. No wonder he's talking about Wonderful World. And that's the end of chapter three. The next chapter is Lightning Through Your Veins. I bet he's going to talk about some electricity and stuff. Anyway, that, that was a good chapter. I quite enjoyed that one. That one was about music and stuff and how music is made through vibrations and how our ear collects it and understands it as a musical note. How incredible is that? It's the same as how we do it with our pitching and voice. If you were to look at anything like our, you know, our vocal cords, yeah, they're almost called vocal cords. It's similar to like, like it, go, it goes here, so like the side of the neck, you see this, it's like a larynx or something, larynx, I've forgotten already. My singing teacher says it all the time, but it goes in and out to create a deeper tone, so it stretches it to make a higher pitch because the stretchier the arm. Whoa! So my larynx is going out, stretching, and to make a deeper note, it relaxes and puts in. You'll sometimes see it go up and down. That doesn't help. That, that, that's like style, but nah. that's how our vocal cords work. Thank you for joining me today. For good morning, gang. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the book as much as I am. This is actually a really interesting book. And, um, I might be streaming this afternoon, I, you never know really. But if uh, I do, I hope you come and join for a little bit, have a bit of a chat. I'll probably be reading more bad romance. Or some good romance. Just some romance stories. Maybe I should play my guitar as well, yeah. That sounds terrible. I'll get better though. Today is gonna be the day that you're gonna turn it back to you. Bye now. Oh, Smash Mouth. How could I forget that? Anyway, stay fresh, stay awesome. See you in the morning, gang.